purpose, power, profit. It's time for another three-piece success session with your host, Robert Kennedy III, RK3. Are you ready? It's time. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another three-piece success session. And as I said to Michelle just now, you probably can't say that three times fast. Three-piece success session. I'm not going to even try it. Maybe I should change the name, but I think I'm liking it so far, so I'm going to keep it. So I'm just glad that we are here today. We, what, we, what we've been doing is really trying to find out or explore some specific areas of life and business. And as you see in my name below somewhere here, purpose, power, and profit. That's what we really want to focus on and concentrate on. So we want to share stories. We want to share uh, skills. We want to share ideas. We want to share strategies for you to be able to really move forward in your life and in your business, especially business. I love business, entrepreneur at heart, and yeah, that's what I do. I'm an entrepreneur. So uh, I want to be able to, to share that with you. And so the people that we have on are really people that have succeeded, people that have moved past just the beginning stage or, or, or have gained traction and gained momentum in their businesses to get to the point where they are. So today, we've got someone amazing on, Dr. Michelle Mazur, and I want to have her introduce herself in a moment, but outside of the fact that she's a lady with bright red hair and very noticeable, she is uh, somebody that has, has a great personality. I know that you guys are going to love her and, and you're going to enjoy hearing what she's got to say today. So, Michelle, tell us a little bit, I, before we say, before you tell us a little bit, how are you doing today? I am doing great. I was on vacation over the weekend, so I'm just getting back into the swing of things. So this is a good way to start the day. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So how, uh, where'd you go on vacation, by the way? Oh, we just went up to Vancouver. I'm, I'm in Seattle, so Vancouver's like three hours away from here. So it was a short, like, weekend getaway. We went to see a concert and just kind of relax. Like, what type of music are you into? I mean, what type of concert was it? Um, it was Queen with Adam Lambert. Wow. Yeah, and it was pretty epic. So wow. <laughs> I was glad I was there. Wow, wow. I have not heard Queen or anything from Queen or of Queen in a very long time. So to hear that, that, that must have been pretty awesome. Nice. Yeah, it was good. Nice. So tell me a little bit about uh, what you do specifically. I know that you are a speech designer. Okay, mm -hmm. tell, tell us what a speech designer is. Well, basically, I help smart service-based entrepreneurs get their ideas out of their head and communicated and explained in a way that other people go, I get it, and okay. I want more of what you've got. So I do that in a variety of ways. I work with people on presentations and keynote speeches and workshops and webinars and sales videos, but for me it's all about if you have an audience, then you need to design your speech, your presentation, your message so that it meets the audience needs and they really understand what you as an entrepreneur are all about. Okay, okay. So if somebody has an audience, I mean, don't they already have the skill set or the things that they need? in order to gain a tribe or gain this audience in the first place? Not necessarily, especially from a speaking point of view, because as speakers and as entrepreneurs, we're asked to speak to a wide variety of audiences. Right. And some of those might not necessarily be our people. So for instance, let's say, I don't know, let's say I get invited to speak to a Rotary Club, which is older, you know, like older adults, retired, more service-based, those wouldn't exactly be my people. So I would need to adapt my message to fit their needs so that I would have some impact and that they wouldn't just be like, oh, she's a silly girl with red hair. So right. <laughs> we always need to be adapting to 
for our audience. And even if we're online and we have a tribe, we have to keep the pulse of that audience because they're always changing. There are new people coming in to our tribe all the time. So really understanding who is showing up, what they're liking about you, what they, you know, what resistance they have towards your message. It's important. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, you ha you I don't know if you went to school for this. Uh, how did you decide or find out that this was what you wanted to do? Well, for me, I do have a PhD in communication. So I realized early on that I I loved speaking and all things communication, so persuasion, interpersonal communication. And when I first went to college, I started off as a music major. Wow. And my emphasis was in vocal performance, and I hated music theory. And as a freshman music student, you take pretty much all music classes, except that I had the option one semester to take three credits of another class. So I took Intro to Communication. Right. and just fell in love and changed my major. And you know, for me growing up, I was on I was in high school, I was on the speech and debate team and that fundamentally changed who I was. Right. And I grew into myself and found my voice and found that my point of view mattered. So that so it was something I always knew that I loved and wanted to do. So I Sometimes I pretty much ignored it, don't get me wrong, but it was, you know, in, innate in me that I knew that's what I wanted to do. Okay. okay. So one of the things that I think we, we want to steer towards or discuss is, is the idea of uh, purpose here. And mm -hmm. a lot of people, they, they go to school, uh, for whatever reason they choose specific majors, and they may say or figure out that they don't really like what it is that they're doing. And yet, they continue through, they go into the job market, and they're doing, they're, they're in these jobs that, you know, it's, it's paying them the bills, they're, they're mm -hmm. getting a salary, but it's not something that feeds them in, in any way. They're, they're not really their best selves, or they're not really contributing. To, mm -hmm. Now, would you say that, um, or how would you respond to, to, those, to those statements? Is it important to be in line with some, some central value or, so, or some core purpose in, in what you're doing? I would say absolutely. And I know this from experience because even though I got my PhD in communication, I was a professor for five years and Although I love teaching and I love the research aspect, I didn't like the politics of being a professor. Okay. So I left academia and went into the corporate world and decided, well, I have all these great research skills. I'll do market research. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I mean, I learned a lot and I got a lot of great experience being in the corporate world, but it was soul-sucking, not to do something that I was intuitively great at every uh, single day. It was that idea of having to force yourself to do the work to, you know, to make sure that you got your PowerPoint, market research, decks written, and it was it was really like just drudgery on a daily basis. So it you're not loving what you do and you spend so much time at your job, I mean, it's at least 40 hours of your week, that right. if you don't love it, it's just really a waste of your life. Right. So the, how, how does somebody find that, though? I mean, it sounds like maybe in your case and a lot of other cases, you kind of went through that whole drudgery, as you put it, and, and, and the soul-sucking <laughs> Uh, in order to get to where you are now, is that, is that something that everybody has to do, or is there a way to skip that? Is there, is there something that you would have done earlier on that would have maybe navigated you to here? I would love to say that yes, I wish there could have been something. Right. 
and in some ways, you know, I could have listened to my intuition more. I could have listened to my friends who were saying, you have all this great knowledge about communication. Why aren't you putting it out there? Why aren't you doing something with it instead of working in market research? But the fact is, I think that was my process uh. to get me ready for this, like, I call this part of my life or my career life Act 3. This is really my third act of my career. And I think I needed to go through all of that and to find out that, hey, <laughs> corporate isn't for me and academia wasn't for me. So since I am psychologically unemployable, I need to go down this path to entrepreneurship. Right. Right. So, oh, so I love that term, psychologically <laughs> unemployable. Tell me about that. <laughs> wow. For me, I, I was recently just, in, I was recently just interviewed on a podcast called The Unemployable Woman, and she asked me, you know, what does that mean? To, what does that mean? And I said, well, it means that a cubicle cannot contain my creativity. Wow. And I always felt in the corporate world, I always felt so restrained yeah like there were things I couldn't do that were outside the scope of my job that I was interested in but not really allowed to explore I hated the fact that I had to tell my boss like when I was going to the doctor there was really no freedom there was like butts in the seats eight hours a day and if you weren't there they assumed you weren't working right which right. was just ridiculous to me so I just do not thrive in that type of environment, I find that I'm more, and I think a lot of people find this, our most creative moments don't come when we're sitting at a desk. Yeah. They come when we're, you know, at the gym running or in the middle of the night when we wake up at 3 a.m. with that brilliant idea. And that doesn't happen in the in the confines of a cubicle. Right. So that's, for me, it was just, it was way too constraining for my personality and for what I wanted my life to look like. Right. Let, let's back up for some, for a second to something mm -hmm. that you, you, you talked about in your process that your friends were always saying to you, hey, Michelle, you've got this skill. You're awesome at this. Why aren't you doing this? Um, what what is it about that, or or why do you think that we don't listen to that as much? Why don't we give that as much validity in in, in our in our process? Is it is it that everybody has to go through this process, or is there um, I don't know something that people see with regard to our purpose that maybe we don't see? I really believe, and I've seen over and over again in my life that. There are people who see things in us that we don't see in ourselves at the time. And yeah. so they can say to us, like, hey, you should be doing more communication or you should be doing this. And we think, yeah, yeah that's going to be really hard. And we just dismiss it. Right. Like, we just whether or not we don't really believe in ourselves at the time or the learning curve is really steep because the learning cur curve in entrepreneurship is pretty steep like launching your own business is there's a lot to learn and a lot to do and so we just kind of go like oh yeah you know that would be lovely right uh, but I don't know like you start thinking about the end goal like I don't know how I would actually sustain myself or make money instead of just taking that one next step and right. for me I remember so clearly I was having a conversation with one of my very good friends and he was like you have all this knowledge in your head he's like start a blog do something and that's right. how my business actually started as I was like okay well I can write a blog <laughs> <laughs> so I just started blogging about communication and then slowly over time it started taking off and you know I started getting unintentionally getting clients from it ah okay so when you say unintentionally what were some of the things that you were doing with this blog to maybe spread it or, or to get some sort of attraction or attention with it yeah so well back then what was I doing with my blog? Uh, back then, I was still very, like, my first client came, like, six 
six months into my blogging journey, right. and there's a lot to learn about blogging, like a lot to learn about finding your voice and how to write a blog and writing headlines and optim you know, search engine optimization and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I was still very much in my learning curve. So I started doing a lot of like following other people's blogs to learn, commenting on their blogs. Right. And my first client actually came because I wrote a blog post and then something in my Twitter feed popped up and it was an article about the jerk in the front row and I was like oh I love the name of that so I went and read the article and I signed up for this guy's newsletter and he emailed me and he's like oh my gosh I love what you wrote on your blog he's like I'm looking for a new public speaking coach right he's like we should talk and I'm like holy crap I am totally not prepared for this <laughs> but I mean for me it was really a ground you know a boots on the ground kind of effort to start getting that following and it doesn't happen overnight and I tell people who start off with blogging that you have to just write as if you have the largest audience in the world you have to write as if you're Seth Godin or Chris Brogan and show up every day right Right. So you talked just now about um, finding your voice. Right? Yes. How do you, and, and the second part of this, we talked about purpose a little bit, but I, I want to talk about the power now. Now that you kind of have figured out your skills, now that you've figured out your place in this world, your, mm -hmm. the, the thing that you are, are good at, that you're doing, mm -hmm. how do you then kind of pick your stuff up? How do you, how do you get it together enough to say, okay, look, I'm I'm just gonna formalize this, and I'm gonna make this go. What what are the things that you did to really start to create some structure around these skills? Yeah, I would think the very first thing is you can't do this in isolation. You really need a good mentor or business coach or someone that has chops in business right. to guide you through. Because you know you start you know. When you first start out, it's all one big experiment, and you just have to look at it that way. Like, this is a huge experiment. I don't know what's going to work. Like, if I'm putting packages together, I don't know what's going to work for that. And over time, as you experiment and start getting clients, then you start seeing the process and the structure for, like, packages. But you far accelerate that if you get a good business coach to help you like figure out your, your business model and your process and how you're going to do things. Because if you don't have someone who knows more than you in business, right. you're going to be in trouble. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so business coaches or getting a mentor is, is something uh, pretty big that you say. Um, so if you had to give advice to someone about um, one of the most important things that you personally need to do outside of um, w with yourself, maybe internally, mm. what, what's probably the most important thing that I need to do to prepare myself to, for success in, in, in business and using my skills? Yeah, I would say the first thing that pops in my head and what was most challenging to me is confronting my money issues. Ah, wow. Yeah, like the money stories that we tell ourselves play, I mean, can play a detrimental role in our business. Right. And so getting, you know, whatever it is, like forgiving those old money stories because they come from, you know, they come from childhood. Like right. we're taught things like, you know, money doesn't grow on trees and, you know, you have to work super hard and 90 hours a week to earn money. And like all of those things that we're told about money hold us back. And when I started a business, I didn't realize that I was going to have to get straight on my money stuff. Right. And it was probably when I was getting more and more serious and planning to quit my day job that I was like, wow, if I don't get a handle on my relationship with money, I'm not going to be successful. And I don't think people really talk about that in business. Okay. So, so what was the one biggest thing that you did to get that handle on, on it, if you, if you feel like you've got it already? 
I, I think it's always a work in progress for sure. <laughs> but I was working with um, Erica Liramark, who is who's currently my business coach and mentor. But I she does this program called the Daily Whip, and I was on the phone with her, and I was talking to her about the money stuff, and she sent me because you know I was raised with this scarcity kind of mentality, right. so she's like okay, and I'm in Seattle, she's like, what I want you to do is go to Nordstrom's and go into the Chanel boutique, which is a place that I always felt like I didn't belong. You know, Chanel, $5,000, $10,000 purses. I mean, that's not my place. Right. And <laughs> so I was a little, like, freaked out, but she had me go in there and just have a conversation with the sales rep. And just talk to them about like Chanel and their products and the people who buy these, you know, purses and stuff. And it was really a good experience because it made me feel like the, the sales guy was so welcoming, like so like just willing to talk and so passionate about Chanel. And I realized that they had a lot of the same values that I had because it is about like you know, small design firms and hand craftsmanship and all of that that I value when I'm looking for it, it, and, and like superior service. I mean, that's all what I value in my own business. Right. And it was this breakthrough moment that it was like, oh, you know, <laughs> these, uh, you know, Chanel is not so different than me right. in some ways. And that the, it wasn't necessarily about the money, even though it's like this high-end thing. But I also felt like I went in there, and since they were so warm and friendly, that I felt like, oh, well, I belong here. It's okay. It's right. not something for other people. And so that was really the beginning of kind of my money breakthrough, like mm -hmm. feeling okay about that abundance awesome. around me. Awesome. All right. So let's we're, we're wrapping up here. Um, Tell us a little bit about what you've got coming up or what you've got going on. Do you have any books in the works or projects that are uh, coming up that you want to share with us? Sure. Well, my book, Speak Up for Your Business, comes out on July 15th. Awesome which I'm super excited about. It's a book specifically written for entrepreneurs who want to speak up for their business. So conveniently named. But I realized when I started writing, I wanted to write a book, and when I started it, I realized there wasn't really any books that were tailored to entrepreneurs and how to sell and do persuasive pres presentations without being like salesy, selling from the stage, but instead providing real value and real transformation for people who are listening to you speak. So that's what my book is all about. It is available, it'll be available on Amazon and all places where you can buy books starting July 15th. Excellent, excellent. That is great. This is Robert Kennedy and that is Michelle Mazur, you can get her or find her as her uh, lower third says or can't see it. Actually, I should probably say it because this is going to be on audio as well, podcast. So ah. drmichellemazur.com, M-I-C-H, actually, Dr. D-R, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-M-A-Z-U-R.com. And as she said, July 15th, she'll be releasing her book, Speak Up for Yourself, and you can grab that on Amazon.com and possibly all the other places, Barnes & Noble, Goodreads, oh, all and those. And speak up for your business. Speak up for your business. Wow. Okay, cool. All right, make sure I'll, I'll put that in the show notes so that people can not make the same mistake that I did. <laughs> so we'll get them uh, really speaking up for themselves and speaking up for their business, really looking forward to hearing more about this stuff from you, Michelle, and thanks so much for spending time with us today here on the 3P Success Session. Say it three times fast, and hope you guys have an awesome day.